got a lot of hype. You know, you know what I think about hype. Let's go, call it! Call it! Call it, play! We have to put all excuses to the side. See, that's what I'm talking about, man! This is it right now. This is the one that you really, really want and need. You know, it's the battle of your community again. Scream! Scream! Watch the screen! Hey, watch the screen! On the rugged streets of Cleveland, as in most of inner city America, the pressure of survival often crushes youthful dreams and avenues of optimism dead end at surrender. Here, children face the ultimate challenge as they attempt to scale the walls of despair in search of hope. Man, what happened to you? Huh? What happened to you? Stop coming. Why? Come, come see me. Huh? Come see me. See, that's the kind of stuff right there. Uh, young kids, ineligible. You know. And I still had to try to keep those kids around. Young kids, you know. Because it's not about, about the exit and the old you know, just to have them around and teach them. One man is leading that climb, and his efforts to help kids overcome the odds are redefining what making a difference means. Ted Ginn Sr. is the head football coach at Glenville High School on Cleveland's east side. Glenville is a proud African-American community with a rich history where Superman was born, and Jesse Owens began his run to Olympic glory. This is an area that has undergone distinct change over the years, an area that was mostly Jewish until World War II. Post-war shifts in population, including flight to the suburbs, and the forced segregation and racial tension of the 50s and 60s shaped the community that endures today. Relentless hardship in the encroaching darkness of street life has driven some here to throw up their hands in desperate resignation. That we not we not bending over backwards for our kids, you know. I just think it's just such a business type deal, you know. It's no more family structure type situations, you know. I don't. You know, I just think in school, you know, we got this cooker cutter type um, system. And I think every kid need to have an individual plan, you know. And because we all different, you know, and, and everybody got a different world and a different thing that they need to deal with. Hey, why, why y'all down here? I would give him an interview, man. I told you. Well, you can't, you got to, you got to leave him here. He not letting you. You can't stand there. Why he won't let you? You must be late. I got some words to tell y'all. Y'all need. Well, wow. huh? He won't let you. Y'all you you must be bad. No. What's up? What? One bad, two bad, three bad. Wait, I'll get out of here in like thirty minutes. Wait, what's up? What's up? I need that. You heard him get on in there. Get it. What's up, man? I have no late pass. I just have. Ginn is a Glenville guy, a tar blooder at heart. He played center and linebacker on the football team and graduated in 1974. After graduation, he worked as a machinist and built airplane parts at night, 
while working days as an unpaid assistant coach at Glenville. A decade later, he was hired as coach of the junior varsity team. Ken also took a job as a security guard for Cleveland schools. When longtime Glenville head coach James Hubbard retired in 1997, Ginn was the only one who applied for the job. He was named head coach despite criticism from some who thought he shouldn't be considered for the job because he isn't a certified teacher. Time that sticks out in my mind the most that maybe gave me the most lasting impression was when I met him at a Fellowship of Christian Athletes camp. Uh, and I had known him before, but I guess when I saw him in action with kids, and he had a whole busload of kids that he brought up for that FCA camp. And uh, that's when I got to know him more intimately rather than just knowing who he was and got to really understand uh, how he cared about kids and, and, and the difference that he had in his mind the passion he had for giving kids a chance and giving kids a, uh, another male figure to lean on and, and get the straight scoop from and, and uh, so that's when I really took notice and then went out of my way to try to be around him as much as I could. When Ginn stepped in at Glenville, the Tar Blooders stepped up. In 1999, Glenville became the first team from the Cleveland Public School System to qualify for the state football playoffs. In 2004, the Tarblooders made it to the state semifinals. They have won 10 league titles in a row and have become a member of Cleveland's high school football elite, a club consisting mainly of suburban and Catholic schools. Ginn has won numerous Coach of the Year awards and was head coach of the winning team in the 2006 U.S. Army All-American Bowl. Despite the accolades, he remains focused on a different kind of scoreboard. I don't, that's everybody else's opinion. I don't, I don't, I don't look at myself as a winning coach. I don't look at myself uh, that I have done enough. You know, how can you call yourself a winning coach and a winning person if, if your philosophy is to help a lot of people? You know, but we got tons of kids that's not doing anything. You know, we got to create situations and jobs and create, have a creative mind of teaching and saving. I mean, if I go 10 and 0, if I go 9 and 1, if I go 0 and 10, what difference does it make? You know, the bottom line of it, yeah, out of that group of kids that I touch, how many is being successful? How many is, is going on to do something in life? You know, that's, that's the part that I'm concerned with. Um, I was very depressed when I would come to school. I was cutting classes. Adrian King is an attorney in Washington, D.C. and a Glenville graduate. She was a member of the track team in high school and cross Ginn's motivational path. My mother, she didn't know what to do with me. And that's when I, I met Ginn around that time. Ginn coached the Glenville girls track team to success, then took over as coach of the boys team and led them on an incredible journey, winning five straight state championships before retiring as track coach after the 07 season. Ginn's approach was he wanted to impact your life, and he used sports and track with myself. Get one! Get one! Get one! Get one! Well, I'm saying that our kids don't have the proper understanding and the proper love and protection, you know, and the knowledge of what life's about, you know. I mean, do we really tell our kids why they need to go to school? They just go to school where you tell them to. He ran 153. What? We educate us before we get there. We forgot about that. Who educates us before we go to college? Who tell us the purpose? Oh, it's five hurdles, two heats, 
you could tell that what he wanted to do was keep you off the streets, keep you out of trouble, and pretty much provide you with that mental strength to be able to exploit whatever talents and abilities that you had so that you could make it anywhere. So we can't go in there flat. And one thing that we know we have to do is finish because we didn't finish last week. And we got to turn it on and keep it on. You understand? You know, and that's showing our character. And I see now that we cannot finish a game. We got to knock people out all night long. But we get too satisfied in what we accomplished early in the game. You understand? We, get, we say, oh, I can take a playoff. We can't take a playoff. So this week is more, you're on national TV, so it's no excuse. Everybody's watching you. So when you do those embarrassment things of not blocking, holding, and not finishing, you know, the whole world can see. The next thing is go to class. You know, in a minute we're gonna be passing out the cards. And we're gonna be checking grades every every week. And some of you are gonna eliminate yourself that's on there because you can't finish in the classroom. Are you gonna give me an excuse of why you got this C or this D or this F? You know. So these are the things that you that I'm continuing to to warn you about because it's coming. Ginn was born in southern Louisiana and spent a turbulent childhood shuffling between the rural south and Cleveland. He felt the pressure of family problems but found footing on the values instilled by his grandparents and mom. Ginn discovered faith right outside the door of his grandparents' home in Louisiana. The church was named after my grandmother. The church started on our porch before I was born. So, you know, they, we went so many feet from the house and they built a church, you know, and the church would live here. These are the steps of the old church. This was the old church. The old church used to be right here before they built the new church over there. Everything that I did as a kid was a sin. That was their way of controlling you. If I go play with the animals, that's a sin. I kill frogs on Sunday, that's a sin. Everything you did was a sin. But it, it was part of control and, and, and part of discipline and teaching you the right way to live, you know? And I just looked at it, it was things that we just could not compromise. Ginn dealt with the difficult emotions caused by the deaths of his grandmother and mom, who suffered a brain aneurysm a year after he graduated from high school. Ginn developed strength of spirit during those troublesome times that continues to guide him. Here's my mom right here. This is my mother right here I'm standing on right here. This is my mom. And I think that's my mom right there. This is Leo Burton. This is my grandmother here. Uh. Coach Ginn's vision is phenomenal. He can look at certain people and say, you know, that person is going to be. I believe that person is going to do this. And the good thing about it is it's always positive. He always finds the positive in whoever he sees.
Ginn's days in elementary school were rooted in discipline and respect, in seeking to understand others while striving to prove himself. I could just visualize all the buses that was here and all the, the kids that got out here on the bus, depending on where you live, you had the bus coming from Hackley, you had the bus coming from up by Clifton, you know, out in the country, but we all went to this school. It was here where Ginn began to dream of football glory, and then as now, a lack of resources couldn't stop him. This was my field right here. This is where it all went down right here at, at the milk carton football. But we couldn't afford a football because, you know, that's just, so we get us some rocks and we put them rocks in the milk carton and we, we had a, had some big games every day. And I'm talking about it was some tough games. Everybody was playing a role here. Somebody was Papa, somebody was Bebe Jenkins. You know, we all had names because we was always looking up to the high school kids and we wanted to be like them. Game night is here, and Ginn's tar blooders await the intense spotlight of national television. Ginn's efforts at Glenville are attracting increasing attention for a variety of reasons, the success of his teams and players chief among them. During Ginn's tenure at Glenville, more than a hundred players have received scholarships, over half of those to NCAA Division I schools. In 2005 alone, 21 Glenville players signed scholarship offers. Glenville players are sprinkled at universities across the country, and several dot the roster at The Ohio State University at any given time. Last year, Gary, 21 players from the Tar Blooders received letters of intent to play college football this year. 15 of those went to Division I schools, and eight of those kids went to the Big Ten. You have a couple of Heisman Trophy candidates who we just talked about, Smith and Ginn, and two rookies in the NFL this year in Dante Whitner and Pierre Woods. Dante Whitner and Pierre Woods were the first of Ginn's players to make it to the NFL, just one of the destinations Ginn pinpoints as he continues to build what he calls a pipeline to life for kids. Woods starred at Glenville and the University of Michigan and is a linebacker for the New England Patriots. Coach Ginn have always told me that uh, you, you, you're the only person to make yourself fail. You're your own enemy. Um, so if you go out and do something that's, that you're not supposed to be doing, then you send yourself up to failure. And uh, that's something that I, I definitely listen to him about and make sure I, you know, I, I kept it in the back of my head. And I tell kids today when I talk to them, you're the only person that make yourself fail. Whitner was the eighth overall pick in the 2006 NFL Draft. You know, Coach Ginn really gave me the drive to want to be a great player. You know, it was times where I was in high school and, uh, you know, I would get tired, you know, want to go home, then want to go to another workout with a personal trainer, and he would make me get up and, and go there. It was time at track practice where you don't want to run that extra lap and he'll make you go. And then fo in football practice where he makes you get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you know, and come in and lift. You know, me not knowing at the time that these are all things that you need to do to make it to the, to the next level, to college. And then when you get to college, you have to do those same things to make it to the NFL. So, you know, without him and, and, and him driving me, I don't think I'll be here. Well, the message that he teaches, that Coach Ginn teaches, you know, it's just life, life lessons, you know, because, you know, without discipline, you know, without being humble, without treating people with respect and all those different things, you're, you're going to end up either dead or in jail, you know, so you can, you can be, you can either have a great life or, you know, you can have a miserable one, you know, and it's not, it's, and like, again, it's not about football, it's about life. Whitner keeps his gratitude for Ginn's help at arm's length with a tattoo that says, Thank God for Ginn. Ted Ginn Jr. struggled with a learning disability in elementary school and endured the ridicule of teachers who wrote off his future. Rather than accepting such academic indifference, Ginn Sr. sought help for his son in the areas where Ginn Jr. needed it most. As Ginn Jr.'s performance in school improved, 
his confidence soared and spilled over to sports. Already blessed with amazing ability, he became a national champion in high hurdles in track and was named the USA Today National Defensive Player of the Year in football. He was a star wide receiver and kick returner at Ohio State. Well, my father always says, you know, that you have to, you have to put the time in to get the, the end result. He always gonna put you around good people. You know, he always gonna put you in a position where, you know, you can overcome whatever you have to overcome. As far as like school work, you know, he put me around people that, you know, sit down and tutor me and do things like that. And then as far as the football field goes and sports wise, he always put me around the good people. It's up to me to buy into the, the, the school work and the training and things like that. And what people get confused with is that you, the kid have to buy into it. And if he don't buy into it, then my father can really, can't really, you know, do what he have to do because the kid or me, you know, is not doing the right things all the way around. Ginn Jr. and Troy Smith formed a partnership that frightened opponents while at Ohio State. But Smith's real enemy as a youngster was a bitterness and distrust which Ginn Sr. labored to erase. Because early on uh, coming up uh, in my growth as a man and as a quarterback, you know, I wasn't the average kid that was going to, you know, uh, at first listen to instruction because I was led astray so many times. You know, growing up uh, in a situation where I thought that I was the best, you know, in every, in any and everything that I did, and it took that that kind of man to sit me down and tell me, "You are a great athlete. You are a great person, but there are still things that you need to address and you need to change." You can't say anything, you know, uh, other than you know he's pretty much the prime, you know, example of a role model growing up where we are from. When I'm sitting down talking to somebody, I change places. I want to know how I, I put myself in their place and see how they feel and how would I feel if I was in their place. Do you know anything about their world? We talking about no kid left behind. Come on. <laughs> A lot of them is left behind. Intensity builds as kickoff approaches. We wrap back in the fire again. You know, this is what it's about. You know, I don't know what team is going to show up today. I really don't. You know, when they, when they kick off, we'll find out. But once again, this is your state championship. This is it right now. This is the one that you really, really want and need. You know, it's the battle of your community again. We got a lot of hype. You know, you know what I think about hype. Don't leave all that hype in the beginning out there. I want to see the hype on the field with the helmets and shoulder pads. But they know that their season depends on this game tonight. So they coming to die. They coming to win. They coming to do whatever it takes to win. They're going to play all night. We have to turn it up. We have to know how to finish. We have to put all excuses to the side. So we got to learn how to love each other, trust each other, fight for each other, and believe in each other. And that's what it's about. Now either you're gonna come out and perform the way you've been taught, or you're gonna keep that mask on your face, or you're gonna be that pretender that we talk about, or you're gonna come out and be a champion. Or you're gonna be respectful and, and in order and do the things that you've been taught because it's so important to our community. It's so important to the kids that's looking at you that wanna be like you. 
is so important that we get it done. Not for our sake, it's for other people. Now society say you have to win a game to be a winner. Well, you know my philosophy to that. I won anyway, I'm here. I'm already here. So I don't won already. Just to have you here sitting in this room talking, I'm winning. But that's not the way society thinks. They only can judge you tonight by what you do on the school board. And that's what we got to do tonight. That's the order of business, is to come out here and take the go home. Okay? Yeah! Okay? Yeah! Okay? Yeah! Hey, brother. Break. Yeah, break, we can, I'm not breaking it. One, two. Our Father, our Father, the war in heaven, war in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth, on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. As we forgive those. As we forgive those. Who trespass against us. Lead us not. Lead us not. Temptation. Temptation. Liberty. God's the king. God's the king. God's the king. God's the power. God's the power. God's the glory. God's the glory. Amen. 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 They told me to go through. Oh, they told me to go through. Hey, hey, wait. Hey, 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 I got to go through that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The perception that, you know, people have of inner city students or just idiots for the kids that, you know, may grow up from broken homes and just different types of things. Denise Tate was an all-city basketball player at Glenville and plays for Florida A&M University. She drew inspiration from Ginn's No Excuses approach. He installs in them that, you know, we can make it out here. It doesn't matter where you come from, it's where you're going in life. Perception at Glenville High School, the perception in the inner city of Cleveland with our children is not to be where some of my kids are at. That perception, we that's over. We don't believe in that here. You know, and, and that's that's what I fight for first. I, I tell kids, you don't let the perception take you out. That's somebody else's opinion. You know, this is the real opinion. This is you have, you can be whoever you want to be. Coach again took in a lot of people in his own home, you know what I'm saying, so that they can become better people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people just not gonna move any and everybody's kids in their house, but him and you know Mrs. Ginn, they did that for people, you know what I'm saying? Came out of their own way, feeding other kids, and they had two kids of their own. And I just thought like, dang, like these are really great people to take in other people's kids so that they can live better lives. Jamario O'Neill's mother died when he was young sending O'Neill into a downward emotional spiral from which he was slow to recover. O'Neill's father, a friend of Ginn's, worried that the youngster was headed down the wrong path and called Ginn for guidance. Um, you know, he took me in as far as, you know, um, you know, cleaning up my image, you know, cleaning up, you know, the, the things that I used to think and how I used to act. You know, I think I was a guy that just um, you know, didn't really know much about life, and, and he took, when he took me in, he just, you know, showed me, you know, the way that I'm going was not going to get me far, and I think without Coach Ginn, you know, I would be, I would be pretty messed up. Well, you know, how many of us coaches move players into our home and feed them and clothe them and give them lunch money every day and, and, uh, and, and make them uphold, you know, their privileges. You know, he just goes beyond. It's a 24-7. One's most prized possession is their time. And the time that he spends with kids uh, is extraordinary, and, and uh, that's why he's successful. Ginn's mission to make an impact on kids is consuming. 
requiring ultimate understanding from his family. My work is every day. My work, my, I don't have an off season. You know, I always have something to do every day. So that's a sacrifice for your family. But I think what the things that make it so, so unique that my wife bought into it. So she had to sacrifice. She had to sacrifice to understand for us to be successful as a family or to be successful in life, we got to have a purpose. So our purpose became my job. I think it has strengthened us um, tremendously as a family. Uh, I think it has made us understand each other more. And so we're really trying to understand other people, understand ourselves, understand the children, what their things are, what our things are, and we're all just trying to work together collectively to, to make it work. The other sacrifice is my kids. You know, we, we brought kids into our home that took their personal space. I mean, that's Tiff, that's Ted, and, we, and that's a sacrifice. And on top of that, you got to raise your own kid. And people might not even understand that, but I just think that's the way you get your blessing. The Tar Blooders face adversity early as the opposing team takes the opening kickoff and drives down the field for a touchdown. Behind early and in hostile territory, Ginn wonders how his team will respond. On their opening possession, terrific kickoff return by T.J. Woods and now threatening to score. Poima up the middle, touchdown! Ginn gets the answer he seeks as the Tar Blooders barrel into the end zone to even the score. Hines again in the shotgun. Hand off to low. Into the end zone. After answering the early challenge, the Tar Blooders gain momentum and begin to take control of the game. Hines, a little quarterback draw, and it's wide open. Hines to the 40, to the 50. Jermell Hines is going all the way. Bye-bye. As an impressive first half for Glenville winds down, Ginn's defensive players lose their poise on back-to-back -back plays, committing unnecessary roughness penalties by hitting opposing players while out of bounds, providing the opposition a spark of hope, and Ginn a frustrating sign that his team has not yet arrived. Come on, man, how can they get all that, man? Lord have mercy! Back, See, that's what I'm talking about, man! They don't call nothing for us, man. Yeah, but we let them get outside and all that mess. Lord, have mercy! What sense does it make for us to do all that? Cam check on first down. Wanted to throw it deep. He's hit right at the sideline. Glenville not happy over there. Man, if you if y'all don't calm them kids down, man, they picked the guy up over there and threw him, picked him up and threw him on the sideline. And he out of bounds. Lord have mercy. He just rolls out. <laughs> he just rolls out to the left. Ooh, that, that was close. They caught another one. Automatic first down, Phyllis. Yeah, that was a late hit. That was not a good play. Got to be smarter than that. And Glenville has to be smarter than that. That was one of the reasons why they lost that game to Benner. They had 11 penalties in the first game. Well, it's a personal foul, and with six seconds left, that's going to give Strongsville a shot at the end zone here. I tell you what, you know, with six seconds to go, you know, they can take a good, you know, they can take a shot at the end zone. Exciting first half here in Strongsville, Ohio. 
Mustangs came out and scored first. 54-yard kickoff return by D.J. Woods gave them good field position. Joe Poima took it in from a yard out, made it 7 to nothing. And then William Lowe with a touchdown, two more for Glenville, and they're up 20 to 7. Let's go to Cheryl Blackwell with Ted Gibb. Thanks so much, Jeff. Now, Coach, again, you started off down 7-0 at the beginning of the game. I heard you at the second quarter telling you guys you got to step up, and now you're leading 20 to 7. What is the key to, to motivating the team and, and to getting them to this point? Well, basically, we just got to stop making dumb mistakes, and you know, we got to stay fundamentally sound and come out and, and be and remain calm and do the things that we need to do so we can win the ball game. How do you get, how do you alleviate those mental mistakes? Um, by going in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you go ahead and do that. <laughs> Thanks so much, Coach Kim. Hey, close my door, man. Hey! Hey! Shut up! Go back to the basic fundamental and cut all that ghetto mess out. We give them everything they got because y'all want to do it your way. Now I told you before, quit acting out. Now go to basic, fundamental, play football, and relax, and quit being selfish. We're trying to win a ball game. It's not about you or you. Now cut it out. What's it correct? Nothing. Correct yourself. You look like an idiot on national TV. They're not going to give up. You want to help them because you want to do it your way. Play fundamental football and forget your ego. Kids, adults, carry the virus of the dysfunction. And what I mean by that, they're the host of it. And it only hurts the people around them. They don't even realize that they carry it. So now you got to become some type of doctor that you got to be able to give them what they need to try to eliminate that virus that they're carrying every day. You need to understand the dysfunction. And then you need to have a positive attitude towards that. You know, you have to get, you have to go, the staff, yourself, had to go over and beyond the duty, call of duty. You can't sit behind the desk and be a good mentor and a good leader. You the captain of the team? Uh, all right, hey, all right, okay. Ginn's commitment to go beyond for kids is showcased each summer with the Ginn bus tour. He loads a bus with players and travels to Division I universities across the Midwest, providing the players, some of whom may otherwise be overlooked, an opportunity to work out for coaches and put them in position for potential scholarship offers. The tour has evolved from Ginn and a few of his players traveling by van to about 50 players, and Ginn expects the tour to continue to grow. He got the idea for the tour when one of his top players was passed over for a scholarship opportunity. It became personal to me because I wanted my kids to be recognized like everybody else, you know, and uh, I felt that we had the kids. And, you know, and the only way I knew how to get it done was 
you know, I'd take my kids to them. And when I started being so successful with my kids, I thought of other children. So I said, hey, I want to open this up because now when I know what I'm doing and I know how to get it done. I think all the other kids in the state of Ohio and the city need that same opportunity. Well, I, I feel that the bus tour is, is, is all, all about life skills because, you know, if we teach in family, you know, we teach in a business, we teach in the core values of life, you know, and giving them an opportunity to meet other people and then to showcase their talent. But every day I try to tell them that we are one family, you know, even though we come from different places and we different color and different things like that, but we all one color here. And if we don't do this, you know, we won't have that opportunity. From his lack of teaching certification to claims of questionable recruiting, Ginn has faced a steady stream of criticism. To those who know him, however, his intentions have always been steeped in sincerity. He does the right thing for the right reason, and it's not always perceived that way. Many people think that Coach Ginn is all about football and about winning games, and Coach Ginn will tell you that it's not about football, it's very little about football that football and track, if you will, are the vehicles that we use to ride in to get what we need to make our kids safe and successful. Coach Ken does not spend time worrying about what people say because he feels, again, his, his responsibility and his calling is from God and his responsibility is to God. A lot of people misunderstand Ted um, and what he's trying to accomplish. Ted's position has been the same regardless if he deal with kids, uh, regardless if he deal with adults or any professional, he's, he's never tried to put on any facade about who he is. Uh, so he doesn't get caught up into what other people's opinion is about him. The one way that I know Ginn Sr. is totally different uh, than, than everybody else in, in the ways in, in which he walks it and talks it is his love. It comes straight from the heart with him. Uh, it's a lifetime job with him. You know, it's not just getting up in the morning uh, from, from nine to five and I have to do this. Those hours run way deeper than anybody could ever know. I used to worry about what people thought of me, you know. So, you know, people going to dislike you whether you're right or whether you're wrong. They're going to have an opinion. That's their opinion, you know. So it's nothing you can say. What can you say? You working. You doing your work. They not working, they just talking. You know, they not being about what they say they being about. You know, I mean, this is, that stuff don't bother me. It used to bother me, but it don't bother me now because I know that I got a group of people somewhere that believe in what I'm doing. You know, let's face it, most of it's envy. When you win as much as Ted Ginn Sr. wins, uh, you know, people have got to find out a reason why other than the truth. The truth is because he works with them. The Targ letters responded to Ginn's halftime message by dominating the second half to put the game away. Don't worry about it, let the clock run, oh! Owens takes a knee. Oh. All right, baby. Hey, good luck, man. Yeah, okay. If I can do anything, you know I will. Yeah. Love you, man. Love you, man. Okay. Glenville scored 20 points in the first half, seven more in the second, and the Glenville Tar Blooders coming up with a 27 to 7 win over the Strongsville Mustangs. Hey, congratulations to the win. Give yourself a hand. But it still goes back to being a team, being a family. You know what I'm saying? Growing together, living together, studying together, and not yeah. being that outside person that will cause us to have problems. I'm not gonna harp on anything else, okay? You know, congratulations, you know, let's go back home, take care of our business, do our homework, do the things we need to do as a student, and then come on Monday, ready to get back to business, and then we're gonna work on being fundamentally sound, all right? Yeah. Everybody up. One, two. All right. They won the game, but Ginn's young team learned some hard lessons about discipline tonight. 
but Gen has faith that they will continue to grow. That faith in kids and their enormous potential is rooted in Gin's belief in God and the power of hope. He cares so much about you that it's like, if, if Coach Gin cares so much about me, then why shouldn't I care so much about myself? So I think that's what made me, you know, really believe in myself and, and, and change the way I changed because, you know, he believed in me. When no one else believes in you, um, Ted again believes in you. <laughs> and um, I just appreciate that it's changed my life. I think it's, um, it's the spirit that he brings because he brings a certain spirit into wherever he is. You can feel it when he's present. Whatever the task is that we're getting ready to tackle, once he's there and we're all like, okay, he's in the room, we can go do this because we feel good about this because we believe in ourselves, we can do this. Coach Yen has a, um, a spiritual basis and in that you, you know the Lord and, and you know that it is not you, but that which is within you that has been placed there for a reason. He understands that he has a purpose for being here and he really feels that his purpose is to help young adults. You know when you, how long you gonna live, you gonna know what your purpose is in life? I don't know, sometimes I think, some days I feel like, you know, I wanna go live a simple life like everybody else. That's what I think sometimes. But, you know, I can't do it. God won't let me do it. I mean, really. You know, when you get tired sometimes, you want to say, man, I don't need this. Well, it can't happen for me. You know. So I'm stuck. But what makes you feel good about yourself? I don't know what makes you feel good. I don't know what will make everybody else feel good. But what makes me feel good? When I see a parent and their son or their daughter or their family happy, that's good for me. That's joy. You know what I'm saying? And that's bad because you know how many people are looking for joy? You know how many? I got, to, I got to live off somebody else's joy to be happy. That's rough, man. So, you know, I got to fight every day trying to get me some joy. And the only way I can get it is helping somebody else be successful. That's tough. That's tough. Because that means I got to influence somebody else to make me happy. If I don't, then I missed. I can't miss. Gin's unwavering support for Smith through trying times provided the foundation Smith needed to thrive. Him at the Heisman, you know, for, for me that was, you know, everything. Welcome. There you have it, folks. The finalists for the 72nd Heisman Memorial Trophy. We'll get to know each of them a little bit better when we come back to the Nokia Theater in New York City right after this. You know, Gene Senior is, is really and, and very, very special to me because he was the last guy that didn't give up on me as a quarterback and as a man, you know. Who do you think affected you the most at a crucial time where you ended up making the right decisions? I would have to say Gian Senior. Uh, without him in this situation, you know, I wouldn't be here. Uh, point blank. Uh, I think a man has to teach a man how to be a man. The 2006 Heisman Trophy is awarded to Troy Smith. <laughs> I think 
think that nothing you know that I achieve now is possible uh, without being seen. You know about the miracle on 34th Street? This is the miracle on 113th and St. Clair. Former Cleveland Browns coach Sam Rutigliano visited Glenville High School several times before and after Gim became head coach and witnessed the difference Gin made in the lives of youngsters firsthand. Ted Ginn has stayed there. Ted Ginn has, you know, sure he's impacted kids like uh, that you, we hear about, like Troy Smith, a Heisman Trophy winner, his own son, Ted Ginn Jr., who now is probably going to be a first 10 pick, possibly. No, it's not those guys so much, although that's great. It's the ones we don't even know about and the impact that he's had on that community, both nationally and worldwide. I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable when you go there. When I went there, it was like a cemetery. It was like a cemetery. The kids had their heads on the desk. The teachers were reading newspapers. Nothing was going on. Now it's vibrant. It's alive. There's kids that have hope. Coach Ken feels as if he was being prepared for this task long ago as a little boy when he played milk carton football, when he took virtually nothing and made something of it. And uh, he still does that today. I believe in the risk. I believe in investing a lot. And if, because if I don't, we're not going to be successful in this world. It's always about money. It's always about he coming to single parent home. It's always, you can, everybody can tell you the reason why we struggle in this world. But what is the solution? The solution is get up, do something, make a difference in somebody's life, lay your life down so that somebody else can be successful. Ginn Sr.'s belief in the importance of community and giving back is on display as the neighborhood gathers for celebration. Today is NFL Draft Day, and all their work and sacrifice and belief in each other has led the Ginn family here. If we got any chance, it's the four and the six. If we got any chance, it's next. Don't be stupid, man. Who is next? Sample, Ted Ginn Jr. has overcome the odds stacked against him as a youngster and is on the verge of realizing a dream. Hey, how you doing, Coach? Oh, I'm good. Hey, I, uh, thank you. Hey, uh, that's right. Hey, but you, hey, we, we'll do everything in our possible, everything to make it happen. We can, we can, you made a good choice. I appreciate your love for that, Cam. You know. Oh, oh, no question. Oh, no. oh, we gonna get it done. With the ninth pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Ted King. The wait for good news isn't long, as Ginn Jr. is the ninth player selected in the draft. He will play for the Miami Dolphins. In September, 
After a long struggle, Ginn's vision of a school for at-risk boys was realized as the Ginn Academy opened in Cleveland. The Ginn Academy started according to the, the blueprint that I've done over the years dealing with, with youth. All the things I do in football and track, you know, all those core values and, and teaching them how to become great people and great students and great men. I said that, you know, I think all that stuff we teach in, in the sport, I think it needs to be in a classroom every day. Together we stay, you always know what's right to say, when my days are cloudy gray, when my 